Good morning and welcome to Radio Friends on this Friday, July the 10th. Pleasure to have you with us today and my friend, my actually two of my friends are with us today, Mar Doring and Connor over on the other side. I wish you could be closer to me, but at least you're here with us. I am so glad we are here with you. Yeah, Mar from um, All Pause Medical and Behavioral Center and Connor there who had become quite a little star with us yes, over the past he was but, very excited to get the call he could come back very yeah much so. but more uh of course you 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 deal with behavioral uh problems or issues with with pets the one thing we wanted to touch on was the fact that now as people who have dogs and cats and and folks have been home with them working yes. from home now some of the moms and dads are starting to go back to work and leaving the pets all day yes. and there could be some separation anxiety there yes well even more than that some of the pets are having problems because of the changes of routine that's already happened so their family was always at work and then all of a sudden have changed their routine and some of the people let's face it this is a scary time some people have been very very worried that's already impacted their pets both medically and physically and behaviorally and now the people are going back to work and not everybody is quite preparing their pets they just have to go to work and with trepidation so that they're not just going to work like it's an everyday thing so, so how do you how do you prepare if you if you've been home for three or four months mm -hmm. Uh, and you've spent every waking moment with your dog, and your dog right. or your cat is by your side continuously, right. and then all at once, you're going to be gone for eight hours. How do you prepare the animal to adjust to that? Well, that's a very good question, and I would say prepare is the question of the day. If you can prepare, if you get that call and you're being told, look, you're going to go back to work and it's going to be after the weekend is over, you're going to go back to work and it's going to be in a week. If you can make little short trips, so go back to the routine that you had already set and have some short trips out of the house. People sometimes overdo the goodbyes and the hellos. And so when they're overdoing the feelings of guilt for leaving come out, and that in itself, as you know, emotions spill to the pets very, very much. They do. Don't yes. They? And so if you, you feel guilty or yes. if you feel like you're doing something that's bad for the pet, they pick that up they immediately. Do. They do. And they see that as mom and dad are worried about something and they are afraid to leave and I have to take care of them. And how does a pet take care of them? They keep them close to home, and then you're leaving the door. Yeah. So you need to prepare and get that pet understanding that, okay, maybe we're just gonna take a little trip and come right back. So make the leavings very, very calm so that the pet does not think that, oh my gosh, we're worried. Just say, everything's going to be okay, guys. I'm going to go. Don't you worry about a thing. If they have a crate and you put them in the crate, that's fantastic. But do it with no worry. I like to give them a good walk before you take them so that they know, gosh, everything is cool. We're having a good time. My family is in charge. They are our protectors. And the protector in a dog world has a right to go. Yeah, Come that's the leader go. of the pack. Exactly. The leader of the pack. Exactly. And when you come back, you don't want to make such a big fuss because your animal then is going to be so excited to see you. And you are then rewarding the excitement and anxiety they have. Wait till it calms down a little bit and then say, oh, come here. I'm so glad to see yeah, you. And yeah. then you can you can appreciate them being there. I wanted to you, you mentioned the crate because I want uh -huh. to touch on that, especially if you've got a new puppy. Right. Um. A crate is so important because that new yes. puppy can get into everything. That yes. new puppy can destroy a couch yes. in five to <laughs> ten minutes' time. Yes. The other thing, that new puppy can start chewing on electrical cords. It yes. can be very dangerous. 
A crate is so important. So important. And like everything else, prepare. You don't want to just throw them in the crate and we're out of here. You want to take baby steps with everything so they get used to you not only putting them in the crate, but I like to take it to the point where I put them in the crate, they get a biscuit. And again, a walk before the crate is a really good thing. Put them in, walk them to the crate. Give them a little toy, a treat, make it very, very comfortable. They go in there, and then they get you sitting right outside the crate to begin with, making sure they know you're not leaving them right at the beginning. Wait till they calm down, they sit down, or they lay down, and then you go ahead and let them out. So and they know what you really want them to do in the crate. Just relax. That's right. it. And, and the, the crate then it becomes a, a place of shelter, exactly. a place of comfort for them. Exactly. It's their home. Exactly. It's their home. Which if you go out of town, you can take the crate with you. If you yeah. go in the car, you take the crate with you. Exactly. I remember uh, the first dog that I ever used a crate with was my dog uh, uh, Sparky. And he was an 85-pound lab hound mix. And that dog had, he was as rumbunctious as you could be. <laughs> and my friend Ann Gafke, who is, is a dog trainer, uh, Ann said, as we were bringing Sparky home from the shelter, she said, uh, make sure you get a crate. And I said, a crate? I don't want to put him in a cage. She said, it's not a cage. She said, it'll be his home. <laughs> well, thank God that we listened to her and, and got the crate. Over time, Sparky then realized that this was his home, and we'd all we'd have to do we'd open the crate and say, "Go on in your house," and he'd go in the house and uh, be satisfied when we went to work. Yes, and then when you come, you open the door. They're so happy to see you. They come out. You give them another walk. Lots of appreciation and praise, and then you're ready to go. Got it. Exactly. Okay. If you got dogs or cats, you know what we're talking about. <laughs> There's love there, and they give it right back to you. Yes. Uh, if if people want more information about uh, dog behavioral problems, Mar Doran, you put the dogs on the couch and uh, analyze them like. <laughs> Dogs and cats, we sure do, right? Dogs and cats, couch. okay. So <laughs> then what's I your, get to pet them. <laughs> what, what, what's your phone number, Mark? It is 573-896-4040. Okay. We'd love to help. And you're located? In Holt Summit, Missouri. All right. Thank you so much for Thank coming you. by. She's a delightful lady and little Connor over there. <laughs> uh, if people don't realize, Connor was uh, Connor was one of those dogs that was abused the most, yes. most of the time. Yes. Right? Oh, yes. Until we got him. Yeah. He was, he was years a puppy old. mill dog, and now he's a he's a little king. <laughs> Mar, thank you so much. Stay healthy. If there is something that you would like to see or hear on Radio Friends, I would love to hear from you. Simply drop me an email. That's Pepper P at Missouri.edu. And when you go out and about, put that mask on. Okay, it's for the other person and you also. Bye bye. <laughs>